Live Code Hangout. Today we're going to be continuing on our Sustainable Urban Design app. As you can see on the screen, we've got uh, an open source project on GitHub. It's a prototype at this point. Uh, we're combining a few uh, technologies, uh, Python on the mainly on the server side, but a little bit of uh, Python in the client with Django and Wagtail CMS. And we're going to be we're using um, Vue.js with a, a Vue framework called, um, what's it called again, Quasar. <laughs> it's got a bunch of UI widgets in it, uh, helps us build um, progressive web apps or uh, sort of hybrid native web apps if we decide to go that route. And what we're gonna try to do today is um, combine them. I'm gonna, not necessarily cut a corner, but I'm gonna defer some decisions about, uh, about session handling and authentication until a little bit further down the line. Today I just want to get uh, a loose integration between the two projects, um, between the two software projects. And our focal point in the software is another is a concept called project. These are urban design projects or urban re renewal or things like that where you have an urban environment and you want to make some changes. You want to propose some design interventions. You want to see what the situation is, do some analysis, find trouble spots, set some goals, um, find the spots that don't live up to those goals right now, and uh, kind of collaborate on some design interventions that might work you towards those goals. That's the overarching idea of this project. And um, we're at a... <laughs> almost proof of concept level right now. So let's uh, go ahead and start the app. What we've got is for convenience, a Docker Compose file that starts you up a Postgres database with PostGIS extension and PG admin. So you can run database queries and things like that locally without having to worry about downloading a database client and things. PG admin is really a nice database client um, specifically for Postgres. Uh, let's see, let me check our branch. So I was just working on a feature yesterday. It looks like um, I'm still in the branch and I haven't merged the uh, pull request. I'm, I'm just gonna go ahead and merge this now. I think it's more or less in a good stopping point and I'm gonna work on another feature today. I, I don't know if I've actually put this feature in our backlog, but in any case, we're essentially working on this feature here. So we'll close that in a moment, but let me see. And this is essentially the, work, the feature we'll work on next. Uh, and you'll, I'll, I'll show this very shortly, but we've got a JavaScript client. It's an, it's a map. It'll zero in or zoom in on the project boundaries, the geography of the project, and let you set some urban sustainability goals like proximity to food sources or schools or healthcare or public parks and things like that. Um, and safety, we have a lot of several metrics. So let me just go ahead and get these up. So we're gonna merge one pull request and then we'll start with this. Uh, it's an interactive analysis uh, tool. And it gives you real-time feedback on the parameters, whereas doing this stuff, uh, these analysis steps with regular off-the-shelf, even open source GIS applications can be very cumbersome and um, you don't get a lot of immediate feedback. So our goal is to make things visible right away as, as to the extent possible. It's not always possible. Sometimes you, data analysis in general, when you're working with big data sets, takes time and it'll be offloaded to the server in those cases. So we've got, uh, in our project, you can see that we've got to a platform, which is our Django project. Running on a, and then we got a uh, client project, which is our Quasar. So I'm going to just get both of those running real quick. And uh, we're going to use Node 12 and Quasar. Dev is the command to start the JavaScript app. It should pop open in a browser here. Uh, I don't know if it'll be on my off-screen browser or on-screen browser. I'm going to build it real quick. In the meantime, I will split this. Um, console so we can see the client server working together. I should have probably done the other order and yeah, it did run. It did open it off stream, but this is a good 
um, opportunity to just to quickly take a look um, at the user interface. It's essentially a, the map is the interface to the extent possible, and we've got some general categories of uh, urban livability that are tied intimately to sustainability. They're, I think they're two sides of the same coin. Um, you can't really convince people to live a sustainable life if it's not comfortable, but generally. And we need access to certain amenities. So what we're focused on right now is this food. And on the right-hand side, we've got a um, generally a, a property inspector. So any of these um, types of analysis you're running at any given time, you'll have properties relative to that analysis. And once I get the server started, I'll refresh this page and we'll get some data actually populating popular here. So um, what was it called again? The uh, oh, I'm in the wrong. Well, platform. And we're gonna we're running in a, just regular Python virtual environment. Actually, which is in a parent folder. We'll activate our virtual environment, see in the platform directory. All right, so our server's running. We actually have some data. Um, so I kind of mentioned a minute ago, I'm gonna skip the um, sort of authentication step of this stuff. I wanna figure out how closely these apps will integrate. If I'll just be serving kind of more or less static HTML and JavaScript out of, straight out of Django, or if I'll have a standalone single page app. But essentially what we're after is for each of these types of urban analysis, and these are subject to change, this, these are hypothetical ones, but I think they were in a pretty good direction here. You have some uh, properties you can change, and uh, you'll get some data. Right now these are food sources in the city of Tampere, where I live, and uh, we've got OpenStreetMap underneath there. And if I wanna say, uh, well, firstly, we uh, use kilometers, in Europe, and uh, although I'm from the United States, so it took me a while, I'm still getting used to kilometers. Uh, I think to have an innate n number sense is, uh, takes a kind of a lifetime, perhaps. And then you, you can just tweak the buffer distance, and uh, it's doing a couple of things every time you tweak it. It's reactively um, changing the circle geometries as well as, um, I forget what the, in the function we end up using is specifically called, but it's basically taking a union of all of these uh, geometries and kind of, I believe, dissolving it into a single or, or sometimes multiple geometries. And what we want to do now is tie this back into the server so that when I'm looking at a, uh, essentially this is an analysis, uh, I'm specifying the parameters and uh, I've already got a project going on the server. I've uh, done that part. We're tying this back in now, and I want to save these parameters. When I get it to a comfortable settings, which are, which makes sense for the context uh, where I'm working, because not every city is the same, um, and not all the cities have the same goals. Some of cities might not even be interested in food, and the, you know these should be optional. Uh, I don't know how possible it is to have a you know unified or uniform um, set of uh, sustainability components, but we're going to try. In any case, I want this to save to the server now. So let's go ahead and merge this pull request. And I'll assign myself to this. It's in progress. We're putting it on our milestone here now. And I'll get a pull request over here. The project geography, it's failing. Some Failures. All right, this and I introduced this. Uh, let's just go ahead and take a look at the core settings platform, core settings pi.
doesn't look like I made any changes. Basically, our, our linter is not agreeing with some of these um, style guidelines. So I'm going to ignore this. It's not that big of a deal. Maybe we'll rebase and merge. Oops. So maybe we'll switch back over to master. It's going to ask me my password, I think. Nope. Okay, it looks like we're up to date with master. I'll probably have to switch this to PostJS. Uh, actually, I'm not exactly sure. I think mainly I, I use this OpenStreetMap dictionary to get the um, the credentials, the server information. But I'm not actually using the Django OR, ORM database engine to to make to query the OSM data. So this is merged. It closed the issue. I'll just assign myself just for posterity and we did this is the 0 0.1 just kind of documenting this the best we can not sure if it'll be useful okay cool so now we basically what I want to have what want to happen here is if I go to localhost uh, 8000 slash CMS hmm it's not running There was an error earlier. Now we're good to go. Um, so essentially, we've got a uh, D Django data model, and we tie it into a project called Wagtail CMS. I can also just access this to Django admin interface, which is fine too. Um, and what a project is is just a, a title and a description. But the key thing that we're working with now is this geographic area, and each project has an ID. Uh, a, might need to switch to a UUID field or introduce uh, authentication and access control, but this is a prototype, so we're not worried about that right now. But essentially, in Wagtail, because I think Wagtail is going to be the main um, one of the main interfaces, we might put this in the front end. I'll have to figure that out. It's not quite set in stone, of course. Uh, I want to put a button here, more or less, that says um, this editing uh, interface uh, is good to a certain extent and. Uh, Essentially, the project configuration parameters like these um, food, uh, buffer distance, and units, I believe, will be stored or at least linked to or related to a project. So you could probably input these directly here, but uh, the, the, it's more intuitive to work with them through this type of interface where you can change the distance and see it right away. And I think we'll just store these geometries directly in the database. And we'll use those for queries. In PostGIS, you can do geo within or overlap or intersection type queries to get either, uh, you know, like building footprints within the area. There's a lot of things we can do. Um, and we've actually got a work, a notebook that, that showcases some of this. So if you're interested, you can check it out. Uh, the Sustainable Urban Design app, uh, the notebooks folder. We've got a few working examples um, of proximity analysis, for example. So we're kind of experimenting with some of the code in Jupyter Notebooks, Jupyter Lab. It's a little bit of a big file, but uh, at the end of the day, uh, so this is kind of an example of a project scope. This is actually the city of Tampere. It's really strange shape, but most of the urban area is down here and it extends pretty far north. Uh, but yeah, we get points of interest and find overlap. This is the transport network. You can see this, how dense it is in the urban area and how sparse it gets in the rural, rural area. Uh, and we plot it on an actual map, so it's a little bit easier to see. As well as, I think this was just showing you the density by through opacity, basically. Kind of what we're after, so that you can see problems. If you're interested in uh, access to transport and food, uh, the areas in green are pretty well covered. The areas in pink might have some, some issues where design intervention might be useful. Um, where what we did though is we had to define those parameters in code here, like the buffer distances, and um, so I'm just moving those over into a more intuitive uh, user interface, and in that you get rapid feedback because each of these steps, um, you know, well, it takes a few seconds because um, it's running the analysis and buffering stuff. I have to figure out how to divide and conquer. Okay, so. I've already got a project created, number two. 
project number two here. And uh, I'm thinking just for starters, I'll um, try to add a new wagtail button. So first we need to create a um, branch. What's go Quasar? And this button will link over to um, Quasar project. So we'll have a setting here for um, uh, essentially the JavaScript client, something like that. And we'll generate a link and it'll open up this Quasar project with a URL argument. We're not gonna worry about authentication yet, but there'll be like project ID number two here, for example. And when it receives that project ID, instead of a 404, we'll get the same map, but with um, the project scope. And then that project scope will query the data. So this is just a hard-coded project extent that I um, that you can't see here. But um, since I just drew a rectangle, I think around this big or something, something along that lines. So we'll have to figure out each of these steps as we go. I don't know how much I'll uh, achieve today. I guess the first thing is how do we add a wagtail setting? And actually before that, with some tea. So Wagtail is a really nice project. It does a lot of things for us. It's not for every project, but it certainly is great if you've got a content management system kind of project and want a nice user interface similar to WordPress, but with really a lot of configurability and you're preferring to work in Python instead of PHP. So we'll check our settings. I've moved those settings to core settings. Installed apps, now that I've changed this a little bit. This is what I was complaining about earlier. Um, let me just double check if I can make this a little bit easier, but to merge. Uh, this works. I wanna merge them. Yeah, list firstly. Anyways. Yeah, I mean that's straightforward. All I could do is line breaks, but I've got this the line break character is really difficult for me to you know, it's actually not too difficult for me to My formatter does it, it just puts it right back there. Okay, I don't care, I'm not gonna fight it. What I'm after here is, I've just split these out into three lists um, to make it clear, you know, what Wagtail is, what's related to Wagtail, what's relating to third-party apps that we've added to the project, and what are the core Django apps. So we're gonna come over to the Wagtail list and see if we've got this settings in here. Doesn't look like it. And then we want to, hmm. Let's 
might just be a core setting for now until I, I don't think I need a whole other app. That's pretty straightforward if it just works because uh, of this decorator, more or less. So uh, if we now just refresh the page because it's not reactive, that's fine. I'm fine with that. Mm, let me just read the book. Aha. Uh -huh. mm. I need to go on wagtail hooks. I got really they hard coded this to specific file name. Another thing, actually, I know the problem here is that I added a file, and uh, while the server is running, it doesn't pick up new files. You have to refresh the server. It's weird. It's just a Django thing, I guess. Doing wrong. 
down here. Wouldn't surprise me if I'm just not reading closely enough for I've got a copy and paste error. A model. So I I can think of is maybe maybe. One is it could be a problem with them in the core directory. This could also need to go in the models pie. Hmm. Let's see if I can find a project on GitHub. Yeah, all right, so let's start an app. That's cool. That's cool. So we now have a site settings app. I'll just commit this. Everything I'll remove this and I'll remove this. And what we'll do is install Wagtail settings. Get these committed. This goes to models. And then we would need a migration for it.
but this these steps were not explicit in here create a model though it's hinted at all right implicit knowledge needed that's cool happens a lot client app setting all right It should be plural or singular. It doesn't so much matter. So that was cool. I've got some good stuff. Caleb. This learnwagtail.com site is excellent. I highly recommend it if you're interested in uh, learning wagtail. It's uh, certainly a good resource. His course is free. I'll just put the link in the chat for anyone who's interested. Ah, okay. It used to be free. Now it's 20 bucks. It's worth $20, though. It's good. It's really good stuff. Really well produced. Cool. a little bit of tea and think, think for a moment. <clears throat> now I'm wondering Customizing uh, appearance with class meta. That's what's actually. Why don't you change the uh, label real quick? So that's a little bit better. Uh, not super worried about the URL right now. All right, let's start here. And I actually need to refer back to Caleb's tutorial. They probably have it here. Yeah. need to use in a template and I believe Wagtail um, so the goal here that what I'm working towards step by step is I think just adding a button here would be good enough for now and Wagtail lets us define a custom template and in that template I can use the full JavaScript, uh, Django sorry templating language including accessing context variables and using them as a anchor, in an anchor tag. So that's kind of what I'm aiming for. Uh, let me just uh, commit this real quick. Uh, 
I'm aiming, I'm going to probably work for just another half hour, so I don't want to kind of overwhelm myself just kind of working uh, incrementally and inter intermittently. Uh, so I don't know how far, I think I'll be able to get the link in and with a URL argument, hopefully, at least that much will be working. I'm not sure if I'll have the geometry loaded in there, how much troubles I'll have, we'll find out. So I need to change our site settings real quick. And introduce the template context processor. What these let you do, you define properties. Uh, settings for your templates, like where they're located, if they're within the apps. And uh, generally, you keep your, you define your templates in the app directories, more or less. So things are well organized. And context processors let you put other data in the template context, which are variables that are available um, to you in your template syntax. Just anywhere in there, I suppose, just so see. Setting is not here yet, so and okay. So that actually worked out. We're going to leave this open, and I'll need to do that. Get settings. And what I want to do is customize the wagtail interface. So this is what we're working on right now. That's the notebook we're sort of prototyping the whole project with. And I think it's not hard. To do, I just don't know how to do it off the top of my head. That's the kind of thing. We don't really memorize all this stuff. Some of it becomes muscle memory, but most of the time we're referring to docs or looking at Stack Overflow. Ah, we can do all that code. Very cool. So what we're after here, I'll leave this open so I can refer to it. In our project, model, or do we do this in the hooks? We're gonna, in the, it seems like this page is a, a list view and the admin is automatically generated and we define the columns and, and things and buttons via this wagtail hooks file and uh, you just tell it we're setting up an admin page for a particular model it's a model admin and you give it an icon and some other metadata and what we're doing now is going to define a button helper Just going to override the buttons. So we're going to add one, and it also might be an opportunity to get rid of this edit button. I don't know if I want to allow people to edit it here or exclusively through this app. For the time being, I, I'm not going to mess with it though. But let me just—I'm going to copy and paste this code wholesale. And we're going to. 
problem here is, you know, this is copyright, so I can't really. So actually just some different code. I think this is for the whole project admin class. So Add button is here, and there's edit and delete. I want to add a new one though. projects. to start localizing stuff, but right now we're not doing that. Now here's where I need to get the settings, the setting URL.
got a new button. I'm going to override or shadow the um, get buttons for object. I guess these are not defaulting, defaulting to none. So, okay. Okay. Cool. Oh yeah. Two other things we're gonna tie it back to the model. easy to fix. And we're 52 minutes. I think this will be my stopping point today just to get this link working and excluded this simple typos. I'm trying to get muscle memory by typing it at the very least. And user. So that's because All right, just gotta figure out how to get this site. Yeah, that makes 
makes sense that these are not there in the context. Little snags, little snafus. It's not broken in apparently, but I can just hard code this to the default site. this in oh okay it's there it is all right good thing that's really what I like about having an IDE as opposed to just a text editor is that you can go to definitions Guess that, but yeah, not a, not a, all this is muscle memory. So, just learning as we go. Okay, and no, but this self has it. Project admin button helper has no attribute user. All right, what is referring to user then? Self request user. Ah, good me, goodness. Okay, let me just run that a little bit closer. All right, cool. And then I believe. Where am I going? Believe this is unnecessary. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Test this real quick. We'll fight this in just a moment. 
I'll run it in debug mode. Configure project. It works. Okay, so that's what we're after. <laughs> I just got to take one step at a time. So we get the button in there. And I need to figure out how to get the site settings and without hard coding everything to being the default site. Potentially this is a multi-site app. I don't, I don't know. One hour, so maybe one and a half hours. I'm not gonna go too long though. Reference to user, put a debugging breakpoint there. Start a debugger, run and debug. Problem is when you're in the admin section, you're not really. Dealing with a specific site, you have access to all the sites, but. Page instances only belong to one. Site. That might be one path. So here's the um, page instance. Search local variables. This one I've changed. So I'm not, uh, 2.0 shouldn't have changed by 2.10, but anyway. That should do it. Let me just check our debugger, stop and uh, run a debug.
That's right, because the project model, <laughs> fortunately, is not a, let me double check, but it's not a uh, wagtail model. I don't think it needs to be. Um, projects are hierarchical. It's a regular model, more or less, I'm hoping. So, one of these This will go here. We don't need this. We can use this here. It's going to work. All right, let's reload. your project looks good okay so that works I'm just gonna figure out how to make sure this jingle model can only have one instance so it's a singleton of setting I just don't know how this will interact with the with 
the actual multi site. Hmm. Getting kind of tired, so I'm not sure if I'm going to tackle this tonight. Um, put a, a note here. Cool. So that's good progress. Uh, just past the hour. Let's go ahead and uh, do a recap of what we've done. So I made a little bit, changed the core settings. We didn't do anything here. Created a new model for the setting. And we created a custom button helper. Good to go. recap now and that way people can just see the TLDR of what, what changed today. Hello and welcome to the recap of today's CodeBuddies.org live code hangout. Today we've been working on the sustainable urban design app. Um, what we have basically are two apps, a client and a server more or less. Uh, it's not clear cut but that's the basic model we're working. We've got a Django Wagtail client that does render some, a server that does render some client uh, templates and administrative views. And we've got a JavaScript uh, app that uh, allows us to run some in, like uh, analysis, some urban analysis type things and configure variables. And I'm trying to kind of merge the two a little bit uh, the task here is to allow people to kind of select or configure urban analysis projects um, by setting like these variables. We've done this in a previous uh, hangout. Uh, you know, you can say we're working in kilometers or miles, and uh, we want people to be within three kilometers of a um, source of food or school or you know park and uh, see the areas in the urban environment that have that meet those criteria and those that don't and try to uh, intervene to improve um, the areas that might be lacking in critical services or infrastructure. So in our Wagtail 
in Django project, software project, we have this idea of an urban analysis project. And here's one, you just kind of define a project, you give it a name and a, a description in a, a geographic area or scope. And the idea is that when you've got the project defined in a geographic area, then you'll only get data for that area and your analysis will only work on data for that area. So you won't be loading the whole world or the whole country or the whole region data. You'll just be loading and working with data that's relevant uh, to your project. Now the, this is a pretty straightforward interface uh, to define and manipulate the project um, boundaries, but I want to tie it into this kind of more uh, intuitive interface for defining the um, project parameters. A project, an urban design project can consist of many layers. Uh, for example, you might be looking at housing and food or land use, transportation, utilities, health, safety, educa safety yeah, education, you know, all sorts of um, uh, aspects relating to livability and sustainability, which are kind of two sides of the same coin. And um, you can choose those which layers are relevant to your project as well as the parameters that you, you know, you're setting your own goals, things that are meaningful and relevant to your context. We don't want to predefine those. Um, now, what we did today is essentially just added a button here. So this is the Wagtail projects list and we've got a button here that essentially launches the, um, the JavaScript client. Uh, and what I need to actually do, I just realized, is pass in the uh, project ID. So uh, each project has a unique identifier and uh, we'll use that project ID to um, run queries and get data, um, which this is hard coded right now, but so the data is coming in and you'll see the project boundaries as well as um, data for each layer. And when you change this, the, you'll save it back into the the project model here. So there's still quite a lot of work to be done here, um, but we're just taking it incrementally. So let's just take a quick look at the code. Um, uh, one more thing that's worth mentioning is this Wagtail um, CMS allows you to define custom settings. So I just, def uh, and menu structures and things like that. Comes with the settings menu by default. We add a new sub item called client app and a URL setting so you can, um, De deploy the client app separately. I'm not sure if that in the long run is going to be how we deploy it or if I like build it and bundle it with the Django project. I'm not exactly sure. So I don't want to kind of, <laughs> anyway, this works for now since they're both running on uh, different ports here. You can see, oops, actually the, um, anyway, I got the, client app running here in one shell and then the server app is running in a different shell. It happened, I started debugging so we actually ended up loading it over here. So the code changes um, weren't too extensive. I'm stopping the debugging session so that's gonna um, stop the app running but essentially what we needed to do is enable the Wagtail Contrib, Contrib settings app which Wagtail comes with that. It just doesn't enable it by default as well as define a new um, Django app, our Django project called site settings here. And we define a model. It's so mainly the scaffolded the project and define uh, the app and define the model. So we included that in our project apps, as well as we want to, uh, I thought we would want to pass in some settings to the template. So I enabled the settings uh, context processor. We didn't up ended up didn't did not end up using that uh, because Wagtail essentially lets us define things strictly through code. So we created a new model. It's essentially a Django model, and it's done in its models pi. I've got a note. Um, Wagtail is multi-site by default. That means each site can have its own settings um, values. And we're not using the multi-site functionality, but it is enabled. And again, this is not running, but uh, sites, there's multiple. Potential for multiple sites. Just 
just by adding a site, which could be cool uh, if multiple organizations want to use the same project. And so we have a URL field and a panel to edit it. And essentially, Wagtail is smart enough to look at the type of the URL field and uh, Django is validating the URL. And we just gave it a verbose name so it would be a little bit uh, cleaner in the menu. The other thing we did is register. We've already got a Wagtail hook to render this admin page, including adding projects and editing and deleting them. And we wanted to add this other button here. And to do that, we had to define a button helper class, which inherits from page button helper because uh, actually, I don't think this needs to inherit from page button helper. I thought I had forgotten that the um, projects model is just a regular Django model. It's not a, actually a wagtail page model. In any case, so I've got the wrong import there. I'll fix that. Uh, you define these class names so that you can control the styling. And we create a function that returns our button um, configuration. Uh, it's a configure button is it's a little bit, uh, this button is to configure the project. Uh, so I'm calling it the configure button, whereas this is an edit project. This is to delete this project. Uh, and those are already part of um, this functions that'll generate those. Uh, so in any case, configure here is because that's the name of the button and not the verb. And um, we have some text that we use in a couple of places. Then I needed to retrieve the, the client settings and get the uh, client app URL. Uh, I'm using get here because I'm only expecting one value to return. But like I said, this is a multi-site um, project. So it's this is potentially buggy. I don't know how to really handle it, uh, so I just added a note to myself that, to see if we need to restrict that or make a setting global. I'm not sure. Now all you do is return a configuration dictionary here with a URL, label, title, and some class names. And that'll, the um, label I think is used for the tooltip, the title is probably used for the button text or the other way around, and the URL is used in the anchor tag to take us over there. And I'm going to pass in a URL property, I forgot to do that. We want to add an argument here or a um, URL path parameter for the project ID so that I can run database queries to get the meta, project metadata and specifically that geometry and start populating the view. We'll do that in the next session. And finally, we just call this uh, get buttons for object. And the object here we're looking at is this project object. This page renders a table of projects. And for each of those projects, it renders these buttons. And we have the local object in scope. And we just get the default buttons. And we add the configuration button and return those. And that's pretty much it. Uh, that's one of the things I really like about Wagtail is uh, it handles a lot of the boilerplate templating and routing, uh, like URLs, definitions, and things for you. At the same time, uh, every so often I'm bumping up against some of the conventions, like the multi-site, where they don't quite fit uh, the project and maybe throw me for a little bit of a loop. But overall, this was pretty straightforward, and I still really enjoy working with um, Wagtail. I think it's got a great community, great documentation. I was relying on a couple of tutorials. Um, I just want to keep this short, but otherwise I, I should give uh, shout outs. I use the uh, learnwagtail.com and another tutorial, actually I'm going to change the history here. Uh, yes, this Tim on web had, had a great tutorial on adding these buttons. I, I used um, this because the Wagtail documentation was a little bit short here on specifically adding a new button, um, defining a custom button. I think I was having some trouble finding the docs, but in any case, this was a great tutorial. Thank you, Tim on web for providing that resource. Okay, well, that's it. That's been a recap for today's codebuddies.org live code hangout. If you'd like to get involved with this project or other similar projects, stop by codebuddies.org. 
it's a great community, very active. There's a lot of hangouts and uh, groups for various um, technologies and industry practices, everything data, you know, from data science to like Java programming, JavaScript, Python, Django. There's a lot of uh, PHP, there's, you name it. There's uh, enthusiasts in, uh, for many different technologies and everybody's welcome. Everybody has something to learn and everybody has something to teach. We are all co-learning here. CodeBuddies is also an open source project hosted on GitHub at github.com slash CodeBuddies. Uh, the project is being rewritten from the ground up, so if you'd like to get involved with a vibrant open source community and project, I do encourage you to check out the CodeBuddies repository. There's issues that are good for first timers, as well as issues that we need uh, some help from more experienced developers with Django and React specifically. Okay, thank you very much for your time. Have a great day, and I hope you're staying well out there.